he is part of. But now when we politicize it, when it becomes weaponized, I think uh, it may bring some issues, based on my survey. The other issue is the whole idea of uh, use of provincial administration in this BPI process. We respect provincial administration. They assist the government in delivering key matters of government at the grassroots level. But on the other hand, if you are a, if you have a problem with your health, you go to a doctor, not to a lawyer. If you have a court case, you don't go to an architect, you go to a, to a lawyer. So in, in the same manner, on matters selling this political document called BBI, I would imagine it makes sense for government to use uh, elected leaders as opposed to use uh, state machinery. That is the feedback that I got uh, from the people uh, down there. Finally, uh, a good idea is a good idea, notwithstanding that idea is coming from which faction. I say so because there are some very innovative ideas that have been given out. But because they come from a certain political faction, people do not want to entertain those ideas. Uh, two ideas came from a certain political faction. Number one, we postponed this referendum up to 2022. Personally, I think uh, that may not be tenable. And the reason is, uh, if we do that, we may encounter some constitutional problems, uh, which includes we need to have constituencies now so that people can buy and get elected in the year 2022. But if we were wait up to 2022, then definitely we shall not enjoy the benefits of the new constituencies. Uh, again also, remember the revenue sharing formula that was passed by the Senate. It was predicated on the understanding that we are going to increase more money to the, uh, to, to the devolved units. So therefore, if for any reason we don't devolve more money, then the third generation revenue sharing formula will be rendered uh, nugatory. Uh, so therefore, I, I agree that we need to finalize the issue of BBI now. However, there is the idea of multiple choice referendum. Uh, for me, notwithstanding the proponents of that idea, there is some merit in that idea. Why? It guarantees at the very basic minimum that BBI will pass. Because it's the whole idea of giving an array of options to Kenyans. So you give them uh, certain options. If this option is good, they pass it. If this one is bad, they don't. So at the basic minimum, you will find some clauses will have been embedded in the constitution. As opposed to voting yes and no, where you run the risk of one, the entire document getting lost. Uh, let me say that uh, from where I sit, we must support the government. We must ensure the good work that His Excellency Uru Kenyatta is doing is finalized. Uh, I will continue being supportive of the government as the chief whip. But on the other hand, I strongly believe it is important that we report the truth. I saw the governors of Mount Kenya region trying to downplay this issue. I saw other members of parliament, like uh, my friend from Nyeri, uh, Mwashimu Ambogo, now, instead of listening to, to my message, he started killing the messenger. He is now becoming personal, uh, as opposed to looking at the issues which I have raised. These issues have been raised in good faith. Uh, there is no malafide. They are all intended to ensure this government succeeds. But please, it is important as leaders to be candid and frank, particularly on matters constitution, because they help this country. Uh, this process is important not only for me, but for the Kenyans, for our children, and for this government which we endeavor to serve. Thank you. The President, my name is Hillary. The President, uh, what seeming like uh, a response to you back in Birmingham, said that uh, 
they can write uh, letters, they can lecture me, but I'm in charge of this government. What do you say? Definitely I cannot engage with my superior. Uh, I strongly uh, I agree with his sentiments and it will be impolite for me to engage with my boss. Thank you. One of the serious criticism has been the letter was meant for the president but it ended up in the press. Is that how you talk to your uh, superior? Did you copy the letter of the president or did you leak to the media? What happened? Who leaked? Who leaked? Who, who leaked? Well, uh, I cannot really tell that. Yes, I think that's an issue which I've expressed myself. Uh, I think we also need to understand the context of that letter. That letter was uh, was supposed to pass through Mr. Rafael Tuju. He is the Secretary General of the party. He is the custodian of all records of the party. It was then also copied to my majority leader, who is technically my colleague in the Senate. And therefore, for me, I think I did write that letter in good faith. By the way, let me tell you also. Oh, uh, now, surely, I don't know. <laughs> it could be between the two. Uh, no, please don't speculate. Please don't speculate. You'll be sued for defamation. Uh, uh, let me comment something. Eh? This is not the first time I'm raising matters concerning uh, problems of BBI in our region. It's not my first. It's not the first time. If you follow news keenly, you recall there was a time members of parliament congregated at my business establishment, uh, which is located in in, in Karen Dagureti area, and uh, several members of parliament had attended. These are the issues we discussed. Then it was decided, oh, we, we escalated that issue the following day in Karen. We met uh, one of the principals behind BBI. Again, I raised this issue. In fact, the majority leader of the National Assembly, Mr. Kemunya, rose and said there's no problem at all with BBI in our region. Only for members of parliament from that region to rise in that meeting and say, no, indeed, there is a problem. Did you, did, have you ever raised this issue with the president as by virtue of your what's your position again i've always been a respectful person uh, president uru kenyatta uh, is my personal friend uh, i have uh, campaigned for president uru kenyatta twice 2013 2017 in fact i'm the only politician in this republic whose political motto had the name Kenyatta in it. I used to say it's Kenyatta and Kangata. In Kikuyu, ni Kenyatta na Kangata. So I've been a strong supporter of President Uru Kenyatta. So if for any reason uh, that was to occur, there's nothing I can do. I just thank the party. For that period, I've served them as the, their leader. And uh, I, I will remain respectful to my superiors and the authorities. I, I cannot enter into an arena of uh, fighting with my boss, but uh, I only strongly believe it is important as political leaders to say the truth, to report the truth, and to be honest and candid in our endeavor when it comes to matters like this one, which has potentiality to embarrass the government. By the way, I did not imply necessarily BBI will fail. You know, uh, BBI can. Ka, 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 ka. No, no, no. I didn't say you didn't that. Imply, you said it. No, no, no. I, I think uh, you, you ought to read that letter. <laughs> you know, BBI can fail in Mount Kenya and it get induced in other regions. True or false? Of course. Mia, oh, my, my, my observations were restricted to Mount Kenya region only. So it is possible for BBA to get endorsement in other regions, but it fades Mount Kenya. That would have serious political repercussions on the government. Serious political repercussions, because it will mean uh, there's a problem of government legitimacy in our region, where I come from, where my president, whom I love so much, comes from. To me, that's my main concern. It's not really the issue of BBA passing or not. It is how, what political message would be sent if it turns out VBI gets problem in our region.
Well, responding to that, also respond to people saying you might be shifting your allegiance to Ruto, in that you are supporting even what he's saying about Libya, multiple things, and so so forth. Yes, I think that's not the problem when it comes to matters constitutional. When good proposals come from whichever side, you now weaponize them. Instead of looking at the merit of a proposal, you start to bastardize that proposal just because it is coming from a certain quarter. That is the problem we have in this issue. Let me tell Kenyans that uh, Kenya has had three constitutions. The 1963 constitution, the 1969 constitution, and the 2010 constitution. The most disliked constitution is the one of 1969. Why? Because it was pushed through Kenyans in a very partisan manner. It, it killed devolution. It uh, started to undo democratic tenets of multipartyism. Uh, ultimately, it started to whittle down our human rights. But the 1963 constitution and the 2010 constitution, the reason why they had a very good rate, high rate of approval, it is because they were passed in a manner that was quite inclusive, where every Kenyan was, in, every Kenyan was involved. Uh, so for me, I'm trying to tell uh, our leaders, please, don't politicize this process. Ensure everyone is on board so that we have a constitution which has a very good rate of approval by Kenyans. So as to whether I'm shifting my political allegiance, let me tell Kenyans, myself as a whip, I believe in one united jubilee. I work for the jubilee party. I work without considering those factions. I don't believe in divisions. I don't believe in hatred. I believe in unity, peace, and harmony in Senate. Says a whip who has taken Thank the you. lead of... Whip, whip, you, you are saying that and you are, uh, your boss, the president, seems to have already decided that... Uh, yeah, there is no longer a, a united jubilee because from his sentiments recently. Why, why are you uh, sort of in um, disagreement with uh, your boss? You see, let me tell you one thing. Eh? As a whip, I'll be measured on the basis of my output as a whip here. Whenever I mobilize senators to support a certain government cause, I'll not be measured as per how I create the divisions. So when I'm mobilizing senators here to pass government business, I mobilize everyone. If I was to dare, take that route of trying to create the division. Bills here are going to collapse. Yeah, for example, let me give you a good example. The other day we were, we were passing, what is it called? The sports bill, isn't it? Surely, if, uh, if let's say Tanga Tanga senator said, we are not going to attend that session, that bill would not have passed. So the whole idea, what happens outside, the whole idea, politics, I don't know which factions, for me as a whip, I cannot at any moment embed such kind of a political culture in my way of doing things. For me, I want unity. I push for a united house, a united party. Because I'll be measured on the basis of the output, which does not engender. I support factionalism. Uh, you what still I believe that GPD is going to come back together and reunite? Yeah, as a whip. And finally, again, uh, you are even that position when others were forced out of office. Do you have some experiences that you might appreciate your predecessors in office experience the same? That you think the challenges, just as you pointed out about your colleague, the counterpart in the National Assembly. Who says actually you have demonstrated immaturity in politics? Well, uh, my counterpart is the one with a motion of ouster. Me, I don't know. <laughs> I think if there is uh, evidence of what he said, uh, it is the fact that six months are not, not even, I think we are now on the seventh month since we assumed this office. He already has a motion of being ousted from his position because he is doing his business in a manner that is discriminative, in a manner that fosters divisions. Well, whenever there are meetings, he calls members of parliament from a certain faction. I think Kenya, Kenya cannot be built 
through divisions. Senate or even National Assembly cannot be built through divisions. It can only go forward as, as, as through togetherness and through ensuring we mobilize people across the board. Thank you and God bless. But it is the same Senate.